How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Ringside Seat Podcast Prediction Show, Episode 8, and the first one of 2017. We're going to break down NXT TakeOver San Antonio that takes place tomorrow night. Uh, thank you all for joining us here on YouTube, Spreaker.com, and for the first time, SoundCloud. So we're out here making moves, so whichever outlet you're, you're listening to us on, we thank you for making us part of your day. As always, I am your host, Dreamcast Phil. I'm Jake Ryan is Epic, and shout out to SoundCloud. And I'm me, just Billy. Well, uh, after what seems like forever, because, uh, you know, we, we got so used to doing these things, like, every two weeks, and then they actually gave us, like, a month off between shows, so I didn't know what to do with myself for a while, but at least now we're back uh, for a big weekend. We got a doubleheader heading to you uh, tonight. We're going to do the Royal Rumble right after this, but uh, we're starting with NXT TakeOver San Antonio, which will happen in the Freeman Coliseum in, you guessed it, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, tomorrow night, and we got a really good show. There's only five matches on this card, but uh, they all look pretty good. I'm pretty excited for this, and it's a little different for us this time around because we actually got to go to the tapings uh, that led up to this, which you know I think we can all agree we had a great time at. Uh, so we got to see all these storylines kind of uh, you know work themselves to what we have now. So we're going to just get going with the first match here on the card. So Roderick Strong uh, in his TakeOver debut against uh, Andre Amos, I think uh, it's safe to say for me that uh, the Messiah of the Backbreaker is going to take this one. Yeah, I agree with you, Phil. I'm going with Roderick. Yeah, this is going to be a Roderick Strong for the win on this one. I'm curious to see what they really do with Amos. I, I know he's turned heel, and I don't know if he's really working in that character. I know he's kind of frustrated with you know, what he's been doing lately, because I know he was under the mask in Mexico, and then they took it off and came here. So I'm curious to see if he can kind of evolve the character. But I see definitely Roderick Strong picking up the win. I mean, to me, as far as almost goes, it's a pretty difficult gimmick to uh, pull off. So I think he's doing his best, but I, I could see another Adam Rose situation in his future. But hopefully he's able to make the best of it. Uh, next we have Ty Dillinger taking on Eric Young. Um, I've always been a fan of Ty Dillinger, but it seems more and more as the days go by, I'm even more and more of a fan of this guy. Uh, they had an interesting thing. I, I forget. I think there's one more. I think all the taping episodes have gone by. So Eric Young kind of offered Ty Dillinger a, uh, a spot in Sanity, and he, of course, turned it down, which led to this match. Uh, I think this is the perfect match for Eric Young to put Ty Dillinger in, uh, put him over, excuse me, and a big win that he desperately needs right now. I'm actually going to disagree. I think I'm going to go with Eric Young. I'm going to go with Jake on this one. I think Eric Young is going to pick this up because like Phil was saying, I do think Ty Dillinger needs something to, you know, put him on the uphill. And I think that's going to be coming in number 10 in the Royal Rumble as a surprise entrant. So in this match, I don't think it matters if he wins or loses because his weekend is going to be made on Sunday. Well, we have our first disagreement of 2017, it looks like. And uh, as far as that whole Royal Rumble thing goes, I you know I think we'll get to that later, but I would agree with you with that. And to me, he could maybe use a little bit of uh, you know momentum going into the Rumble, but I think people would just be happy to see him to the point that they wouldn't even really care if uh, he won or lost the night before. So it's more wishful thinking. I think he could use the big win to catapult him to uh, a spot in the Royal Rumble. But uh, we'll see that on Sunday. Next we have the Fatal 4-Way NXT Women's Championship match. Asuka defending her title against Nikki Cross, Billy Kay, and Peyton Royce. So Asuka has the belt, but the only one in the match without a last name. I'm going to say she keeps the belt. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this seems like a... I mean, Nikki Cross could maybe win it, but uh, this seems like the perfect match to just keep Oscar looking down and I see her almost rolling through all these all three of the uh, opponents yeah I agree with you Phil I'm going I I think I'm gonna have to pick with pick Oscar as a retention I think this match is gonna steal the show these all four of these women have, are you know great competitors in the ring Oscar has been like the main one that we've seen the most exposure of but you know Nikki Cross Billy Kay Peyton Royce they all have you know, um, great backgrounds and, you know, wrestling. So I think this match is going to steal it. But in terms of who's going to win the match, I'm going to have to go with the champ, Asuka. But 
I'm I'm really excited for this match. Yeah, I mean, Fatal 4 Waves are always exciting. NXT knows how to do them well, especially if you go back to the uh, other takeovers they did it. I'm just noticing this now. Let me give a quick shout-out to Jeremy in the chat. Uh, he's following along with us. And he agreed with you guys. He thinks Eric Young is actually uh, going to win. You know, he's on a, a what he says, you know, a high street right now with his stable. Um, and he could see him, you know, being there uh, to win that yeah. one. So Jeremy agrees with yeah. you guys on that. Just kind of going off that, I think that if Eric Young were to lose and Ty Dillinger be in the Royal Rumble, where does that leave Eric Young? I think, you know, there won't be a win-win situation, Dillinger in the Rumble and Eric Eric Young getting the win. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, Jeremy, thanks for listening along uh, in the chat there. Uh, next, we have the NXT Championship. We have DIY, Johnny Gargano, and Tommaso Ciampa against the Authors of Pain with Hall of Famer Paul Ellering in their corner. I actually had the Authors of Pain winning this, and earlier today, it was today or yesterday, I remember sending you guys the link, that uh, one of the members of TM61 is injured and should be out for a long time. So what I thought might have happened is the Authors of Pain winning, and then uh, you know TM61 be the team that chases. I think since they're kind of on the shelf for a while, they're going to make this feud go a little longer. So I do see the Authors of Pain eventually beating them, but I think DIY maybe holds on to it up for this show at least. Yeah, I'm going to uh, I'm going to say the authors of pain win, and I'm also going to say that maybe Gargano and Champa may be maybe called up in the near future. Yeah, oh, I would love to see Gargano and Champa be called up. They're great. I, they're a great tag team, and they would be great singles competitors as well. That would be awesome to see them on the main roster, but. In terms of this feud that they got going going now in NXT, they're they're still on that momentum streak of winning the championships. I think a lose a loss now would just kind of put a damper on their you know their spirit and their uh, you know their run in NXT. So I'm gonna have to go with Gargano and Champa on this one to pick up the win. And I actually saw them wrestle in uh, NXT Indy for the tag titles on the house show. And Gargano and Champa picked up the win. It was actually a pretty good match considering you know how big. You know, authors of pain are they were definitely got some good psychology going. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. With, you guys made a lot of good points. I could definitely see them going to the main roster at some point, and if they were ever split up, I mean, they could be on a you know two hundred five live and be great additions to that. They could be split up. They could be a tag team. They're both very talented, and and I I agree. I think their time on a on NXT isn't quite done. I think they're enjoying being you know the main right now i think we need to see the revival get brought up before them because they've done everything they could do in nxt so it would be nice to see them uh go up it's just a matter of where uh, a lot of these tag teams i feel would fit better on smackdown but that's just because raw tends to have the you know i think it's after the new day held the titles for so long they're just kind of getting back to a division that's uh, you know competitive you know all the way around and uh, jeremy is also going with uh authors of pain and he brings up a really good point that he could see the Authors of Pain uh, having an unstoppable run similar to what the Ascension did back in the day, which I think could be a great idea as long as they don't, uh, you know, have them face jobbers and actually have them face, uh, you know, contracted wrestlers and make that the dominant run. But I think the comparison is definitely spot on. Yeah, that's it. Still just completely shot on the Ascension. <laughs> <laughs> well... Look at where they are now, but that's a whole other story. But I think that is a good point what Jeremy brings up. You know, there, there's a key difference between the Ascension and the Authors of Pain, and that's Paul Elrig. And I think that he, he might be like kind of we, – we haven't really seen too much of him but in terms of speaking. But I, I think that what he brings to the table, just that reputation, is, is what might elevate them to – further and beyond of what the Ascension has done. I'm curious to see what the future holds for them. Yeah, he could definitely be, you know, the big difference maker. I mean, these guys obviously aren't probably great talkers. That's why Paul's there in the first place. But uh, even without, I feel like they're a better overall team. But yeah, Paul Ellering could definitely, you know, help them with things that they struggle. He'd kind of be the thing that, uh, that puts them above, you know, it kind of hides their weaknesses a little bit, I would say. Uh, next up, we have the NXT Championship match. We have Shinsuke Nakamura defending his title against the glorious Bobby Roode. Uh, this match had a really nice build, I felt, when we went to the tapings. Um, they ended up just getting to the point where there's, you know, the contract signings, uh, you know, which th those are kind of overdone, in my opinion. But with this one, it was just they just got in the ring, were both handed microphones, and 
I don't doubt there was some script to it, but, like, they just got to destroy each other. They just kind of roasted each other, as the kids say now. Uh, they just, you know, and it, it felt real. It felt like, you know, they don't have, they don't pretend that they have issues with each other, but they're both like, you know, you're in the way of what I want, and I'm here to get it. Uh, I've been back and forth on this. Um, I could see Bobby Roode winning this. I think being that it is the beginning of the year and we're coming close to WrestleMania, uh, this is around the time that we're going to get some NXT call-ups. And I'm not saying Nakamura's going to be in the Rumble tomorrow. I don't truly believe that. But uh, I could see this be where Roode, um, you know, Roode takes, it, takes his belt and, you know, runs with the ball, so to say. I'm going to disagree. I'm going to go with Shinsuke Nakamura with a title retention. And split between the middle, I'm going to go with Jake again on this one. Shinsuke Nakamura for the win. I think, um, you know, Bobby Roode definitely is going to be NXT champion, but I think he's going to win at NXT WrestleMania weekend, and then so that will leave Shinsuke there for the possible post-WrestleMania call-up, maybe. I can see that more so than in the Rumble now. That definitely makes more sense to me doing it that way. It's more logical that way. Yeah, definitely. So um, as we got through this card here, we got a couple minutes left, so I thought we could maybe just tack on something that uh, uh, we were there live to see, and it was a buzz for a little bit. It was Chris Hero, Cassius Uno, returning uh, to NXT at the uh, at the end of the live events. The way they kind of put it on social media is that he showed up you know, at a live event, quote-unquote, but really it was just at the end of the tapings. But uh, what could that mean going forward? Where do you see Cassius Uno being injected into this? Does he go right for the title? Do you think he's maybe going to, you know, pick a fight with, you know, an upper mid guy in NXT? Where do you see Cash Uno starting off now that he's back? I say that he has one, he has one minor feud. He then gets it to a number one contender match, and then he goes on to the NXT title. Now, which one, will that be in the order? I don't think so, but... That's how they did it with Nakamura, and he's been a success. And so I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking they're just going to do a slow burn with uh, Ono before eventually giving him the strap. Uh, that's an interesting point. When they brought Shinsuke in, like they brought him in in a small feud. Well, not small feud. He came in to fight Sami Zayn. Mm-hmm. Um, but with Cassius, when he came back, he came right at Shinsuke. So he did, I could see true. him like immediately be involved in the title pitcher. Maybe a triple threat like Shinsuke, Rude, and Ono at the WrestleMania takeover. Right. Have Rude win that one, maybe. Maybe Shinsuke stick around for one or two more tapings, and then he gets the call up, and then the big feud is Ono and Rude post WrestleMania. Yeah. I mean, it could be similar, more so like where Joe, you know, he came in. You know, he, he got through a few people, and then after a while, he was, he's just kind of standing there with his arms out, like, where's my title shot, guys? I clearly earned it, and then eventually getting it. Um, but overall, I'm, I'm happy to see him back. Uh, you know, some people think he's, uh, I think he's a perfect fit for NXT. I think he was back in the day. I was very upset when he was uh, let go. I actually started watching NXT maybe the last two or three months he was there in the first place. But uh, I'm, I'm glad to see him back. Uh, you know, there was... Rumors of, of Kenny Omega, we don't quite have enough time to cover that, but uh, it doesn't look like he's going to join, but uh, it does look like Cash Sono is going to be back in NXT, and it's going to be great to see. So guys, we wrapped up NXT TakeOver, we're going to be back in a little bit for the Royal Rumble, so you guys stay tuned, and uh, till then, I'm Dreamcastville. I'm Jake Ryan, and I'm me, just Billy. We'll see you in a little bit, to call the Royal Rumble. See you then.